coming at me with this look, you know? And everybody just steps aside for her, like the Red Sea or whatever, just clears the path. And I'm like, what's with this nut job? But you don't even know this woman. I've never even seen her before. I was just sitting there with my friend Rima. Do you remember Rima? No. She's a friend of mine. I was just sitting there with my friend Rima, and then all of a sudden, this lady is in my face. And she's all yelling and, and sweaty and really pissed. Why? I don't even know at this point. I mean, it has something to do with her boyfriend who's apparently sitting at the other end of the bar or something. Were you flirting? No. I don't even know who she's talking about. So she's all up in my face and her breath is like... Boozy? Oh, yeah, boozy, but even worse, you know? Like something rancid stuck to the roof of her mouth or Ew. something. Like, like rotting <laughs> peanut butter. Lord, is so he? she's harassing me and blowing her stank breath in my face and cussing. Oh my god, you wouldn't even believe the words that were coming out of this lady's mouth. And you don't even know who she's talking about. Well, no, she was talking about her boyfriend. No, I know, but... Augie. Oh, I thought you didn't know who she was talking about. Well, no, at the time I didn't know who she was talking about because I didn't know that he was there. But then later on I figured it out, like, oh, huh, she must be Augie's girlfriend. So you know it. Well, yeah, I know him. Can, can I finish? Okay, sorry. So anyway, she's all, you bitch, you fuck you, Is you bitch. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Um, she's all, you be, you F you, you be, and just, you know, talking like a maniac. Uh -huh. And people are starting to pay attention, so I'm starting to feel self-conscious. And, and she's just going off. And there's nothing I can really do about it because the place is so crowded, you know? And she's a real big lady, like real hefty. More chins than... Oh God, what does mom always say? More chins than a Chinese phone book. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's not even like I could have gotten around her if I wanted to. And, and I'm starting to feel violated, you know? I mean, my personal space, my dignity or what have you. So I just, I made a fist. I hauled off and boom. What does that mean? It means I hit her. No, you didn't. Crazy, right? You hit her? Yeah, right in the face. Boom! Oh, she went down. <laughs> oh my god, Izzy, you hit that woman? What? I couldn't get around her. She was screaming like a <coughs> retard. Izzy! What? What would you have done? Well, I certainly wouldn't have hit her. Jesus! Uh, yeah, and you know what they don't tell you? It hurts to hit someone. It freaking hurts! Well, yeah. Well, they don't put that on TV. It's all like, oh, well, huh, that ought to show them. But for me, I was like, Motherfucker, that killed! I mean, look at my knuckles. What? Nothing. You don't approve? I didn't say that. Look, this lady was at me. I know, I didn't say anything. Yeah, but you want it, though. I just worry about you. Well, don't worry about me. She was the one on the floor. That's not what I meant. <laughs> you were in a bar fight. So? A bar fight, is he? She was up in my face. I know, but it's so... What? Jerry Springer. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? You think I'm trashy? You punched a woman in the face. Oh, she provoked me. Were you drunk? No. Oh, my God, don't judge me, Becca. I thought you were getting it together. Really? You said you were going to take it easy. I mean, why do you always you have to do... You can't be do doing this kind of stuff, Izzy. You're not a kid anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was a cutoff date. Well, there should be. For acting like a <coughs> jackass, there should be a cutoff date. Were you on anything? Oh, my God. Were you? No. And Becca, why do you always have to do that? Look, I went out. I got into a fight. I, I, I thought it was a funny story. I thought you'd be amused. I'm not. Clearly. I thought you were going to do less of this, that you were going to go easy now. Look, I'm still coping too, Becca, okay? I know. It's not the same. But it's still harder, right? Don't do that. Do what? Give me a break. What? I'm not allowed to be upset You're not anymore. allowed to use him. As an use excuse. Him. Wait a second. That's You're not, not what allowed I was to doing. use him Wait. to justify your own shit. Just don't do that. Please. That's not what I was doing. Okay. <clears throat> I'm hungry. Do you mind if I get something? Since when do you ask? Well, you're making me feel sensitive. Hey, where's Howie? He's with Rick. They're playing squash. Squash? It's going to be creme caramel. Ooh. Well, Howie's a lucky man. You won't ever see me make anyone creme caramel. If you're hungry, Isabel, just grab something. Don't stand there with the door open. Well, can I have one of these? There's an extra in here. Yeah, sure. Well, I won't have it if you don't want me no, to. No, you're right. There's an extra. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, just let me finish it first. Why? I can eat it like that. No, then it's just custard. But I like custard. I didn't make custard. I made creme caramel. Okay. <laughs> So how's work? 
Mmm. Don't ask me that, please. Why not? Um. Well. <laughs> you got fired. Never ends with me, does it? Right? Not often, no. Don't tell mom, please. How does somebody get fired from Applebee's? Hey! <laughs> it was all politics, okay? I don't really want to get into it. Ooh, I like how it oozes. Of course you do. Mmm. Better than custard, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> you were right. Again. And again and again and again. I wasn't using him as an excuse, Becca. I was just trying to say that it's been hard to pull it together for all of us. Lizzie, please. And I wasn't drunk when I hit that lady, stone sober. Yeah, right. I was. I only had a soda that night. She gonna press charges, you think? Nah. Augie would kill her. She's over it anyway. Moved out. Went to her cousins or something. What are you talking about? She moved out of Augie's place. They're not together anymore. I'm sorry. Do you know these people? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. And the girl I had only ever just heard about. Izzy, what did you do? What do you mean? To that woman, what did you do to her? I, I told you, I hit her. No, before that. Nothing. That was the first time I ever met her. People don't scream in your face for no reason. Sure they do. You should go out more often. <laughs> were you sleeping with him? This Augie guy, whatever his name is, you were sleeping with him, right? Where are you going with this? Well, Jesus is. You tell this story like you're some innocent bystander. You didn't know who this woman was. I didn't. You were having sex with her boyfriend. That's so besides the point. <laughs> it is. They weren't together anymore. They were only living with each other because of the rent situation. I mean, she didn't care what he did. Then why did she accost you in a crowded bar? Because she's a lunatic. Oh. And because Augie told her I was pregnant. Why would he... Oh, my God. Is he? I know, right? No, you're not. He's a great guy, Becca. You're going to love him. He's a musician. That's terrific. No, it's not like that. He, he gets work. He's a working musician. Is that why you're here? To tell me that you're pregnant? Well, pretty much. I knew something was up. You're not one to pop by on a Saturday afternoon. I pop by. How long have you known? A few weeks. And you're just telling me now? Well, Jesus, Becca. What, you didn't want to tell me? No. Why? Why do you think? God, everything's so fucked up. Does Mom know? Yeah. You told Mom before me. I had to. Oh, my God, Izzy. Stop he? saying that. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to keep it, if that's what you're asking. I mean, Augie wants to, too. We're excited about this. I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing that gives a person clarity. Is he? Look, Becca, I know, I know that this is probably hard for you for like a bunch of different reasons, but can I just say that I don't need your advice right now? Or, or whatever lecture it is that you're composing inside your head, I just, I need you to pretend to be happy for me. Even if that's not how you feel, I would just like you to pretend that it is, okay? Well, of course I'm happy for you. I was just taken aback. If you think a baby is going to fulfill you or give you clarity or whatever, then obviously it's a wonderful thing. I am happy for you. I don't need to pretend. Jesus, give me some credit. <sighs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <sighs> well, I should probably hold off on this guy. What do you mean? I'm washing all these clothes to give to Goodwill. I might as well save them for you in case you have a boy. No sense in my giving them away. <laughs> I don't know, Becca. I mean, they're in baby clothes for so long, it'd be forever until they fit up into that. very quickly. You wouldn't even believe yeah, it. Yeah, I know, but we don't even really have, like, storage or anything so we'll like that. we'll keep them in the basement. But what if I have a girl? And I'll bring these to the Goodwill. What's the big deal? You'll be happy I saved them. A couple of years' worth of free clothes here? Think of all the money you'll save. Well, it's not about the money, Becca. Well, it should be. You have to start thinking about that kind of stuff now, Izzy, especially if the dad's a musician. It, costs it would be a lot. weird if I have a boy to see him running around in Danny's clothes. I would feel weird. You would feel weird too, I think. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Of course it would be weird. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, it was a nice idea. You get plenty of clothes anyway. Christmas, birthday, no, you don't have to worry about No, obviously, I know that. I mean, it'd be one thing if they were hand me down. Exactly. It's probably 
probably a girl anyway. You think? Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely getting a girl vibe. I'm a little psychic about that stuff. <laughs> oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember I said Debbie was having a girl? Oh, you did. And Karen? Karen, too, I remember. I think there's a girl in there. <laughs> I hope there is. That's what I want. Well, I mean, obviously, so long as it's healthy, right? But if I had to choose, I would definitely choose a girl. Me, too. So what did Mom say? <laughs> she was happy. Really? Yeah. I mean, I thought she was going to lay into me, but no. Hey, thanks for that creme caramel. You're welcome. And Becca, listen, I'm sorry if this is hard for you. I know the timing of this really sucks. Hey, what can you do? Glad you told me. And I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? Nine weeks pregnant, in a bar, drinking. She said she wasn't drinking. No, she said. But you know, is it? Plus, the place is probably clogged with cigarette smoke. <laughs> Not anymore. Clean indoor air act. She was in Yonkers. You think they enforced that in Yonkers? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Hey, if the babies in France turn out okay, I'm sure this one will be fine, too. <laughs> you think this is funny, Howie? Of course not. But you need to relax about it. Easy could be right. About what? About the baby getting her on track. Wake a person up. Did us. She was bragging about a bar fight. <laughs> it wasn't a bar fight. They were in a bar, fighting. No, Izzy hit someone. She didn't get to a fight. Blows were never exchanged. So what's your point, that it's okay for a pregnant woman to be punching people? Well, so long as they don't punch her back, it's probably all right. What are you... Why are you defending her? I'm not. I just think it's silly to get worked up about I'm it. not worked up. I'm just saying. All right, you're right. It's a mess. But what can we do? I mean, maybe he'll be fine. Is he not a moron? Huh. Okay, she acts like one sometimes, but maybe it could be good for a person. I know that, Howie. All right then. Hey, that was good, the creme caramel. Thank you. Izzy tried to eat one upside down. <coughs> uh, you want more wine? No, I've had two already. Uh, half a glass. I want to empty the bottle. Mom's thrilled, by the way. She called? Izzy must have told her I knew. <laughs> How was that? What, two hours on the phone with Mom? <laughs> what are you doing? My eyes are sore from standing at that computer all day. You think this means she wants baby stuff for her birthday, paternity clothes or something? No. Uh, wait for the baby shower. Just get whatever you were going to get. Good, because I was going to buy her a bathroom set. A what? A bathroom set. You know, shower curtain, bath mat, a little skirt for the sink. They sell them in sets. This is for Izzy's birthday? Last time I was over there, you should have seen her bathroom. It looked like a frat boy decorated. <laughs> what? It just seems like a funny gift, a bath mat. It's the whole set, Howie. No, I know, but... I thought it would be nice. It is nice, but maybe she'd rather have perfume or something. Izzy doesn't wear perfume. I know, but I know, I'm trying but... to be practical. Okay. It's a good gift. I'd be happy if someone gave it to me. I'll make a note of that for Christmas. <laughs> you think it's stupid? No, no. Get her the sink skirt, the set thingy, whatever. Bathroom set. Get, get her that if you think she'll like that. I'm going to. She'll love it. You should have just said that to begin with. I know, now. <laughs> so how was squash? It was good. I lost, but it was good. How's Rick? Rick's fine. And Debbie? Debbie wasn't there. No, I know, but did Rick mention her? Not really, I guess she took the kids to her mother's this week. Rick didn't want to go? Well, he has work. And where are the kids? Fine, I guess. Uh, he said that Robbie's doing t-ball now, and Emily has mastered the plie. <coughs> Anything else? No, that's it. You know, you can't call, you know. You can call Debbie and ask her these questions yourself. I don't want to call her. She should call me. Okay. Why can't she call me? I don't know. No? She's uncomfortable, Dad. Is that what Rick said? No, Rick didn't say anything, but obviously if she hasn't called you, it's because she doesn't know what to say. How about, hey, Becca, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Look, if you're pissed, why don't you call her and tell her? No, Howie, it's her job to call me. OK. 
Okay. I would have been there for her. God forbid anything ever happened to Robbie or M. I wouldn't have vanished the way she did. Well, people get weird. You know that. I mean, it's probably hard for her. Hard for her? I'm just saying. I'm, look at my brother. He spent the whole funeral talking about the Mets. I mean, obviously he couldn't deal. Talk about anything but Danny. And that's my brother. Yeah, well, your brother's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should drop her a note. Maybe you should. Dear Debbie, just so as you know, accidents aren't contagious. Okay, let it go. Let what go? Whatever's making you tense. You should try to relax a little. I am relaxed. Mm -hmm, well, we'll see. Jeez. What? It's chill music. Come on, you need it. Now turn around. For what? Just face that way. <laughs> Thank you. You see? Your shoulders are all knotted up. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, forget about Debbie and Izzy and whoever else is bugging. She has no idea, Izzy. No idea what she's in for. No. Do you remember how exhausted we were? The feedings at all hours, the sleep deprivation. You think she's ready for that? The torture of it all? Enough about Izzy. I'm sorry, but Izzy's a sleeper. She needs more sleep than most people. You talk about wake up call or whatever. Oh, she's gonna get one big time. You know, maybe we should go away somewhere. Cruise or something. You need to be pampered. You take it off enough time as it is. I'll talk to Alan. I mean, what's another week? I can handle most of my accounts from out of town anyway. What are you doing? Kissing your neck. Why? I'm trying to relax you. Uh-huh. Something wrong with that? I see what this is. Dimming the lights. What? You don't have eye life? strain. So? <laughs> Staring at that computer all day. Yeah, well, I do stare at that computer all day. You're trying to seduce me. Am I? Flying me with liquor? Yeah, well, it worked in college. <laughs> all right, Romeo. What? That's enough. Why? You're being very naughty. Well, naughty's good. You used to like naughty. Where, where are you going? I have all that stuff to bag up, Howie. Are you kidding? No, there's piles of clothes up there. Well, if they waited this long... I really wanted to get it done tonight. And well, we'll get it done tomorrow. I I'll pitch in. Yeah, right. I will. Uh-huh. Becca. I'm sorry. I'm feeling kind of antsy tonight. You're right. This Izzy stuff really got under my skin. Right. So what, are you going to pout now? Oh, Jesus, Becca. Jesus what? It's been almost eight months. But who's keeping track? I am. You know, I'm keeping track. I'm sorry. What? That makes me perverted? Wanting to have sex with my wife? I didn't say that. Yeah, well, you give me these looks like I should feel guilty or something. Funny, I've been getting the same looks from you. When have I ever made you feel guilty? Look, I'm just not ready yet, Howie. I'm sorry if you think that's abnormal. I don't. Then what's the problem here? We're never going to be ready. If this is just about the sex, how? It's not just about the sex. Then what else is this? It, it, it's also about the... I, I don't know. Maybe it is just the sex. I don't even know, honestly. But we're not going to suddenly wake up one day and be back where we were. I know that. So we need to head in that direction at least. Which will feel strange for a while, but... But you, you want to have sex. Don't say it like that. Why not? Because it sounds crass and selfish. Well, considering everything else, the fact that Danny died, for example, don't you think it is crass and selfish for you to be roping me into sex when you know I don't want to have it? I wasn't roping you into anything. Jesus. No? Al Green isn't roping? No. Al Green. You know, I thought it was nice. That's all. I was trying to make things nice. Well, you can't. I'm sorry, but things just aren't nice anymore. I think you should see someone. Look, I know you're not one for therapists, but I, I think you should. We can go together if you think it'll help. 
that maybe you could try the group again. No. There, there's a couple of new parrots now, and it's changed the dynamic We've a little. We've had this discussion, Howie. Fine. A, a psychiatrist, then. Someone to talk to. No? Yes? Do you have an opinion? I think we should sell the house. Come on, Becca, what? I think it would help things if we moved. I don't want to move. He's everywhere, Howie. Everywhere I look, I still see Danny. We love this I house. I can't move without... Look! Look! Run away, Bunny, for God's sakes! The puzzles, the smudgy fingerprints on the door jams. I like seeing his fingerprints. Because you don't have to sit and stare at them day in and day out. You get to escape. You get to go to work. Well, if you want to go back to work, Becca... I don't! You can call Sotheby's. No, I can't. I gave all that up to be a mother. Well? Well, what? Well, that didn't work out? I didn't say that. Then what? Well, if that's the issue... Th What's the issue? Well, then... Maybe we should try again. For God's sakes, Howie. What? I'm only is saying that, that... Is that what this was about? No! No, of course not. It's just that... Maybe it's something we could talk about at some point. I can't have that talk. I'm sorry. Okay. Look, maybe we can consider it at least. The house. Yeah. We'll consider it. Thank you. crashes, it's the whole list. It's long. Well, it still doesn't mean it's a curse. Nobody said it was a curse, Mother. Everybody <coughs> does. That was my whole point. Everybody says it's a curse. Well, nobody in this room. Well, you want to know what it is, really? Hype. Perpetuating the myth, that whole royal American crap. Mmm, this is good cake, mm. that guy. <laughs> but the Kennys aren't cursed. They are just very unlucky. And kind of stupid, a lot of them. Hey, cut me a piece, would you, Ben? Here. Too much money, that's their curse, and too much time on their hands. If they had a real job like normal people, most of those Kennedys would still be alive. Gee, thanks, Howie. You know what? I am just so glad that you went and found that timeline for her. <laughs> Maybe if they stayed home and watched television once in a while instead of zipping off to Vail, none of those things would have happened. 
You have the most interesting theories. Oh, don't patronize me. I'm not. I'm being serious. Man, this cake is good. <laughs> Normal people, for instance, don't have their own planes. I don't know anyone who has a plane. Do you? Do you have well, yeah, I know one guy, but... All right, well, you know someone, but that's not the norm. The average person doesn't have a plane. Yeah, you're right. He's definitely not average. If he's a member of the jet set. Ah, exactly. That's what that word means, the jet set. Jet set is buzzing off the coast of Massachusetts and in the little pipers or whatever and crashing off the coast of Massachusetts. <laughs> Regular people don't have ten relatives that die in plane wrecks. Well, it's not ten. Oh, just about, if you count Teddy, who survived his. Well, I think it's sad. Teddy surviving? Mm -hmm. Well, of course it's sad. All those good-looking people falling out of the sky like that? Oh. <laughs> Friggin' waste. But it's not a curse. It's just rich people acting stupid. I thought you liked JFK. <laughs> I'm not talking about JFK. I'm not talking about the ones that were assassinated. Although, getting shot by a crazed gunman is kind of a... Rich guy problem, too, isn't it? Well, not necessarily. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the unqualified pilots. I'm talking about playing football and skiing at the same time. Well, that was stupid. Yeah, oh, look at me. I'm a Kennedy. I can catch a ball while I'm flying down the mountain on sticks. Of course it killed him, idiot. Now, I know that's a terrible thing to say. But this is a grown man acting like a moron, the arrogance of those people. You know, the Greeks would call that hubris. Arrogance in the face of... It might not technically be hubris, actually. Well, if hubris means reckless, then that's right. No, it doesn't mean reckless. It's, it's more about the gods. Well, that's probably the right word, then, because they're very Catholic, those Kennedys. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. I'm going to look it up. Mm, mm. Me up, would you back up? <coughs> Isn't this nice sitting around talking about politics? I never do this. It's a nice change. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm drinking juice, right? It, that's like the third time you've done that. I know, I'm sorry. What are you testing me, Becca? No, I'm not testing you. Okay. Here it is. Hubris. An insolent pride of presumption. Oh, that's them, all right. Insolent pride. Yeah, and number two is in Greek tragedy, arrogance towards the gods leading to nemesis. I swear to God, it's like coming to school when I visit you two. Is that right? You think you hated school. No, I didn't. I don't listen to her, Howie. I didn't hate school. Just because I was lousy at it doesn't mean I hated it. Sounds like you and squash, Howie. <laughs> she means the game, not the vegetable. <laughs> I know what she means, thank you. Hey, you know who was first? <laughs> You know who was this? Rose Kennedy, 104 years old, living through all that death one after another. She's the one I feel sorry for. Does anyone want more cake? Yeah, none for me. We should do gifts then. Oh, yay, gifts. I don't know why I got on all this Kennedy stuff. What was I talking about before? Aristotle Onassis. <gasps> oh, all right, that makes sense. What was I saying about it? Oh, um, you were just saying how he would get really tipsy and never stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> You bitch. <laughs> I'm not tipsy. I'm sure I had a very interesting point to mm -hmm. make. This is from us. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Oh, it's wrapped so nicely. Such a shame for me to rip it open. <laughs> oh, Becca always makes such pretty bows. I don't have the patience. My fingers are too fat. <laughs> Oh, look at that. It's more of a practical gift, but I thought you could use it. it even, it's a bathroom set. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> oh, isn't so pretty? Look at the colors. The honey. gift receipt's inside if you want a different style. <laughs> Why would you want a different style? It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Is this your way of telling me that you don't like my Three Stooges shower curtain? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> okay. It's for when you want to change. You'll have it. <laughs> it's nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that Three Stooges thing is kind of goofy, honey. But the word is kitschy, mother. Hey, look up kitschy, would you, Howie? See if it says crap. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to get you. This is perfect, thank you. I like your shower curtain. I know you do. I was just kidding. Oh. It's that you're moving in with Augie. Exactly, and I mean, Augie's bathroom could definitely use some oh. frivering up, so this is great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Howie. Yeah, hey, don't thank me. Becca picked it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Now me, baby. Ooh, an envelope. I smell cash. <laughs> you wish. Do you think I would trust you with cash? <laughs> it's 
It's a oh, gift certificate. <laughs> to a pea in the pod. You got really nice maternity clothes. Nothing schlubby. Oh, thanks, Mommy. <laughs> Oh, I thought we weren't doing baby stuff. Who said that? For the birthday. I thought we'd wait until the shower. <laughs> well, get us something else for the shower. What's the difference? Nothing, but I would have gotten you something different if I knew that we were doing baby stuff. That's my fault. I'm told her to wait. Hey, this is not baby stuff. This is this is mommy stuff. She's got a neat clothes. I know. That's why I... I get, it's perfect, okay? I, I needed a new bathroom set. It's fine. I know you did, but you need baby stuff more. Hey, so take it back. Let me take it back. <laughs> Tell her no, that. He's right. We should. Oh, pack up. I'll get you a basket of Mustel lotion. I like and stretch marks. Um, it's it's fine. Back to me. What? Pekka, let go. I like the bathroom set. Get me the lotions another time or something. Okay. Thank you. It's a nice set. I like the colors. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> so. Can anyone else use these stretch mark lotions or just pregnantly? <laughs> hey, that's nice. Oh, he's good. The vet says he needs to lose a little weight, though. Really? Yeah, he's like a trooper. What are you feeding? Just regular dog food, whatever's on sale. Because I wrote down the name of what he usually eats on that printout I gave him. You still have that printout? Yeah. We're feeding him science diet. They have this special low fat mix. Oh, that stuff's so expensive, though. He likes what I've been giving him. Except it makes him fat. Howie. He's not fat. He's just a little chubbier. Well, <laughs> I think the weight suits him. I think he eats that way when he feels punished, but that's what I do. <laughs> but I think he misses you. Hey, do you guys remember pickles? Ooh. Now she was fat. <laughs> pickles was this dog we had growing up. Oh my god, she was this huge. Oh, what breed was Pickles? She was a mutt. Well, obviously. But she was mostly Collie, I think, mixed with some German Shepherd. Now, she was fat. Probably because of what you fed her. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember what it was. What I was going to say about Aristotle and Essis. Mom, do it, you have to? It was about his son, the one that died in the plane crash. Yeah. I'm going to wrap this cake oh, for you. Good. Oh, I know, I know. Another rich kid in a plane crash, but that was my whole point. You should have stopped me from going off on that Kennedy tangent. Because my point was about Aristotle and Essence and how when his kid died, he was so distraught about the senselessness of it all that he put up this big reward for anyone who could prove that someone had sabotaged the plane. Have you read this, Howie? I'm not sure. Huh. He was so upset that it was an accident which he couldn't believe. He offered all this money for anyone who would give him a reasonable explanation. He needed someone to blame. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. He needed a reason for losing his son, but of course it didn't come. And so it killed him. The grief did. He, couldn't, he just couldn't accept the fact, and he never could come to terms with it, and there was nothing to give him comfort. And so he died. You see, he would rather his son have died by some kind of secret assassination instead of by bad luck. Oh, yeah, it's like the, it's like the Kennedy curse, isn't it? People want things to make sense. We know that Danny didn't die because of a curse, <coughs> Mom. Of course not. Or because someone sabotaged us or was out to get us. We know there's no sensible explanation. I know you do. Then why are you telling this story? I'm just talking. Can I talk? You never just talk. It sounds like you're just talking, but it's always so much more, isn't it? I don't even know what that means. Well, here's an idea, Ma. Change the subject. Didn't I say no wine? She brought it herself. What was I supposed to do? What did I say? <laughs> Ma, you promised. <laughs> Promise? Promise what? It's not my fault that she missed my point. What point? That Aristotle Onassis died of grief because he couldn't find someone to blame? <laughs> I'm not talking about blame. I'm talking about comfort. Oh, comfort. Well then. Hey, guys, this is supposed to be my party. Now, where are you getting it? Comfort? Yes, if I may ask. I'm not. Well. Well what? Well, I think you should. Okay, I'll get right on that. See what I can dig up on eBay. Oh, don't get flipped, Becca. I'm just trying to talk to you. Well, I'm going to clean up, because it looks like we're about done here. Howie says you won't go to the support group. Oh, Howie says? She was asking how you were doing. Why didn't you just say fine? You know she's going to run with whatever you give her. Hey, I always thought talk was healthy. Isn't that what they say in all the books, Howie? 
So what is this exactly? An intervention? I hope not, because if it is, then I'm really pissed. It's not an intervention. We're just <clears throat> having a discussion. And you had to have it tonight. I mean, you couldn't have waited until tomorrow. You had to have it on my birthday. Izzy, please. I remember when Arthur died, I found this support group very helpful. Well, that's you. It isn't me. And Arthur isn't Danny. I didn't say it is. I'm just saying it was helpful. She doesn't like the people. Howie! What? You don't. I'm just explaining. What's wrong with those people? They lost children, too. They understand what you're going through. No, they don't. They understand what they're going through. Well, still, you must have things in common. You would think so, Mother. But actually, we don't. Other than the dead kid thing, of course. Can't hurt to give it another try, Becca. Of course it can. You haven't met that room full of God freaks. They're not God freaks. Well, most of them are, Howie. That's all they talk about. God's plan. At least he's in a better place. They're not all like that. My favorite is, God needed another angel. What is that? He's God. Why didn't he just make another angel? These people. Maybe God gives them comfort. Well, it just pisses me off trying to find some ridiculous meaning and, oh, look, I stepped in shit. Must be part of God's plan. Now you're just being silly. I'm being silly? Look, faith helps people cope. What's wrong with that? I know when your brother died. Again, if I didn't Arthur, have God, I... That's why I don't go. If I didn't have God. They're not all like that. Kevin's not. Kevin's not like that. Hmm, it sounds like you're jealous of their comfort. Oh, yes, I am. Of course I am. How nice they all have something that makes them feel better. As if I don't feel bad enough. Now I have to have that rubbed in my face? Hey, nobody's rubbing it. You're not being fair. I don't know why you don't believe in God anyway. See? <coughs> now look where we're going. I took you to church every Sunday. You used to believe in God. Well, I don't anymore. Well, maybe you should. What if you're wrong? What if there is a God? Then I'd say he's a sadistic prick. Oh, please. <laughs> Come on. Worship me and I'll treat you like shit. No wonder you like him so much. He sounds just like Dad. Oh, don't you go and strike out at me like that, Becca. I know you're still in a bad place, but I'm just trying to help you. Right. I wish someone sat me down when Arthur died. I wish someone gave me a little advice. You know what I wish? I wish you would stop comparing Danny to Arthur. Danny was a four-year-old boy who chased his dog into the street. Arthur was a 30-year-old heroin addict who hung himself. Frankly, I resent how you keep lumping the two of them together. He was still my son. Yes. And I don't recall anyone giving you instructions on how best to grieve for him. You know what? It's time for me to go to bed now. Izzy, I hope you enjoy the bathroom set. I'm gonna. I was never that mean to anyone. When Arthur died, I was just as upset as she, were, as she was, but I never treat anyone like that. What about Mrs. Bailey? Oh, nobody's talking about Mrs. Bailey, is he? Please. You know what this is about. Yeah, her and her mouth. I knew the party was a bad idea. I mean, didn't I tell you not to get into anything with her? We got a letter today. Jason Willett. What? Why? What do you want? And she said it didn't bother her, but... I I'm sorry, Is. No, hey, this was great. I mean, we should do this again next year. <laughs> okay. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Corbett, I wanted to send you my condolences on the death of your son, Danny. I know, it's been eight months since the accident, but I'm sure it's probably still hard for you to be reminded of that day. I think about what happened a lot, as I'm sure you do too. I've been having some trouble at home and at school, and a couple of people here thought it would be a good idea for me to write to you. I'm sorry if this letter upsets you. That's obviously not my intention. Even though I never knew Danny, I did read that article in the town paper and was pleased to learn a few things about him. He sounds like he was such a great kid. I'm sure you miss him a lot, as you said in the article. You know, I especially like the part where Mr. Corbett was talking about Danny's robots, because when I was his age, I was a big fan of robots as well. In fact, I still am, in some ways. I've enclosed a short story that's going to be printed in my high school lit magazine. I don't know if you like science fiction or not, but I've enclosed it anyway. I was hoping to dedicate this story to Danny's memory. 
this one doesn't have any robots, but I feel like it would be the kind of story that he would like if he were my age. Would it bother you if I dedicated the story? I, if so, please let me know. The printer's deadline is March 31st, and if you let me know beforehand, I can have them take it off. I, I know, this doesn't make things any better, but I just wanted to say how terrible I feel about Danny. I know that no matter how hard this has been on me, I can never understand the depth of your loss. My mom has only told me that about a hundred times. I, of course, wanted to say how sorry about, I feel about the way things happened, and that I wish I would have never driven down that block, as I'm sure you do too. Anyway, that's it for now. If you want to let me know about the dedication, you can email me at the address above. If I don't hear from you, I'll assume it's okay. Sincerely, Jason Willett. P.S. Would it be possible to meet you in person at some point? This is the strongest near ground wind ever recorded on the planet. What is this? Becca? Becca! Becca! What? What did you do here? Where? What? What is this? What's what? The television. What is this? It's a Discovery Channel, the tornado program. You said you wanted to watch it. I taped it for you. Why? For Christ's sake. What's the matter? It's Danny's tape. You, you recorded over Danny's tape. No, I didn't. Pride and Prejudice was on his tape. We were watching it last night. I switched them. What? I watched Danny's tape later, after you went to bed. Well, why didn't you take it out of the machine? Why didn't you check to see what was in there? I assumed it was the TV tape. Jesus, Becca. It was one of the baby videos? No, it was the most recent, the long one. The park was on it, and Mexico. Well, how was I supposed to know? You snuck and Christmas. Down here. I thought it was the TV tape. It wasn't. I know that, Howie. So it's gone? The whole thing? I'm sorry. It's the only copy, Becca. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. Are you sure? What's that supposed to mean? You think I recorded over Danny's tape on purpose? I don't know. You don't know? You should have taken it out. Why would I deliberately record over it? I don't know. Why would I? I don't know! You, you took the paintings off the fridge. Danny's paintings. To save them, I put them in plastic. Yeah, and you shoved them in a box. For safekeeping. Yeah, okay. I didn't throw the paintings out. I know you didn't. You think I didn't want that tape? I don't... Of course you did. Obviously, it wasn't on purpose, but... What? Maybe subconsciously. Subconsciously? Is that what they're telling you at group? How I'm doing things subconsciously? You're trying to get rid of them! I'm sorry, but that's how it feels to me sometimes. Every, every day, it's, it's something else. It feels like you're trying to get rid of any evidence he was ever here. I didn't know that tape was in there. I'm not talking about the tape. It's not just the tape. The paintings are downstairs in a box. You can look at them his whenever clothes, you want. The, the shoes. Why would we keep his clothes? We don't need that to sell stuff. the house. We talked about this your already. Tears. Sending tears to your mother's. We had a lot going on, Howie. We couldn't deal with the dog. I was fine with the dog. And I was the one walking him. Well, he got underfoot. And he was a reminder. <coughs> yes. He was a reminder, and I wanted one less reminder around here. I think that's perfectly normal. Yeah, and since you never wanted the dog to begin with. Oh, for God's sakes, well, Howie. if I hadn't bought the dog... And if I hadn't run in to get the phone, or if I had latched the gate... I left the gate unlatched. Well, I didn't check it! I'm not playing this game with you again, Howie. It was no one's fault. Not even the dogs. I know that. Dogs chase squirrels, and boys chase dogs. Are you telling me or yourself? He loved that dog. He did. And you got rid of him. Right. Like I got rid of the tape. I get it. It's not just a tape! I'm not talking about the tape! Becky, it's tears! And the paintings! And the clothes! It's everything! 
You have to stop erasing him. You have to stop it. You have to just stop. Do you really not know me, Howie? Do you really not know how utterly impossible that would be for me to erase him? No matter how many things I give to charity or how many art projects I box up, don't think I don't see him every second of every day. And yes, I'm trying to make things a little easier on myself by giving some clothes away or, or hiding some of his pictures, but that does not mean I'm trying to erase him. That tape was an accident. And I'll beat myself up about it forever, I'm sure, just like everything else I could have prevented but didn't. It's not what I want, Beck. It's not what I'm talking about. Really? Because it feels like it is. It feels like I don't feel bad enough for you. Like I'm not mourning enough for your taste. Come on, that, that is not Or fit. mourning the right way. But let me just say, Howie, I'm mourning just as much as you are. Your pain and grief is just as real and awful as mine is. I know that. You are not in a better place than me. You're in a different place. And that sucks that we can't be there for each other right now, but you know what? That's just the way it is. This stuff is all we have left. It's all I'm saying. And every bit of it that you get rid of it. I, I understand, Howie. You don't want to let it go. I understand. Do you? Do you? <coughs> this is something has to change here because I can't do this like this it, it's too hard it's too hard and I want the dog back your mother's making him fat I want the dog back well, maybe we can just I don't want to. How much more do we have to lose? I miss the dog. I'm sorry, but I miss the <coughs> one back. Gotta do to sell a house. Well, lucky for me, I'll never own a house then, right? <laughs> hey, what is this? Pie? No, it's a uh, tort. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Hmm. Are we done yet? Uh, 15 minutes. We're supposed to go till 4. How many do we got anyway? Not many. No serious buyers. Maybe the German, though. It's, it's hard to tell. Is that what he was? German? his accent. I thought maybe Irish. <laughs> you know, we should probably get a broker. I think a lot of people are afraid of Fizbo's. Afraid of what? Fizbo. For sale by owner. There's no middleman. Oh. I was trying to avoid the commission, but we probably need one. Mm. This is the watch, I think. You know, I thought we had a fight with that family. The little girl. Nothing. Maybe I priced it too high, or they were just browsing me. Uh, you freaked them out, Howie. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? You should have cleaned out Danny's room. I mean, made it into a guest room or something, an office, whatever. Why? Because everybody that went in there was like, Oh, you have a boy. How old is he? I mean, did you think people wouldn't ask you that? I didn't think about it. I just thought it would be good for them to see there was a nice room for a kid. But, okay, common sense, Howie. I mean, you have robot sheets on the bed. The conversation's gonna come up so that people ask, and then you tell them, and then it's just oh, awkward. Two people ask, that's all. You ugly them out. I mean, come on. Would you want to move into a house where a boy just died if you had a little kid? 
people believe in that kind of stuff, you know, house karma. Yeah, well, they're stupid then. Okay, yeah, maybe they are stupid, but still. It's something you need to consider when you're trying to sell the house. I mean, I can't believe I'm giving you business advice. <laughs> is that what this is? I'm just saying. I think it's important to sort out what is and isn't appropriate to say to people sometimes. It isn't appropriate to talk about my son? No, you're not getting me involved in that conversation. Look, if you want to tell complete strangers all about Danny and how he died, that's none of my business. I mean, God knows you enjoyed doing it. Just don't be surprised when nobody wants to buy your house. Becca has got to stop baking. I'm joining Norman. <laughs> Is somebody coming? No, nah, he's still mad. He, he, he's just mad because he's still tied up. So, can I ask you something? <coughs> All right. Why is Becca so mad at me? Is it just because I'm pregnant, or Becca's not mad at you? Oh, then why does she act so pissed off at me sometimes? I don't know. You, you should ask her. I can't. Why not? Because then that would only make her more pissed off. <coughs> Probably, but. Is it because she blames me a little bit, maybe? God, is he? Well, I don't know. I mean, if I hadn't called to bitch about mom, then she wouldn't have come back inside and left Danny outside Ten by himself later, to run you're into the me street. This? Well, I don't know. No, is he? No. Nobody blames you. <clears throat> okay. So, it's just the baby then. Well, no, it's just the fact that I'm having a baby. Honestly, I don't think Becca's mood has anything to do with you. She doesn't think I can do it, does she? She doesn't think that. She doesn't think I'm cut out. You should really be mother. having this conversation with her. You know, I, I know I've been a fuck-up, okay? But people can get their shit together. Of course they can. And I know that I'm not as organized or as, as homey hey, as Becca. Nobody's comparing you. Really? Because <coughs> that would be a first. Look, it's, everyone's excited about the baby. But you got to understand, there's other stuff going on around here. Okay, but I'm not talking about other stuff. I'm talking about me. Being a capable person to have a baby and take care of it and raise it and, and protect it. I mean, I resent the feeling I get from her sometimes, and, and honestly, you too. Like, I don't deserve this baby, or that I'm not mature enough or smart enough to take care of it. I mean, come on, if my mom can do it, how hard could it be? <laughs> I just, I just want to feel like you guys have some faith in me, because I'm up for it. Great. I hope you are. Oh, you hope I am. Gee, thanks, Howie. I don't know where you want this conversation to go. And I really don't know why you're having it with me. Fuck it, nobody's coming. You mad? No. <coughs> you seem a little mad. Just get in the beer. You want one? Uh, no, I don't want one. God. Um, can I ask you something else? Have you got a list? Things to ask Howie when he's cornered? No, not a list. What is it? Well, you're not going to like it. <laughs> then even better. In 1995, stream theaters from all over the world gathered at the University of Southern California. Do you remember my friend Rima? This is the question? No, this is the prologue. You know how some books have prologues? I'm familiar with the concept. <coughs> Rima, do you remember her? Not really. Um, I brought her to a barbecue a couple years back. Short hair, curly, kind of chubby. Okay, I'll take your word. She works at Calderon's, that restaurant in New Rochelle. Do you know that restaurant? Yeah. Okay, well, even though you don't really remember Rima, Rima seems to remember you pretty well from that barbecue. She said um, she waited on you a couple weeks ago. Did I stiff her on a tip? <laughs> because had I remembered her, obviously. She said I you were with another woman. I was with another parent from the support group two weeks ago, right? We grabbed a bite after the meeting. I mean, if Rima would have identified herself, I would have introduced her. And this woman's husband doesn't attend these meetings with her? Is this still part of the prologue? <laughs> Why were you holding her hand? Rima said that you two were holding hands. And Rima is what exactly? Your spy? Uh, no, she's a waitress. She was just doing her job. You were the one sneaking around. Okay. Now I am there. Well, I told you you weren't going to like it. That woman is a friend of mine whose daughter died of leukemia six months ago. 
I mean, Jesus, is he? What are you trying to... I was just to... asking you a question. You don't have to get defensive. Just because I was holding a person's hand, that doesn't mean... <laughs> I know that you and Becca have been having troubles lately, okay? But, what are you talking about? I mean, about? I would like to think that if they got to the point where they were unsavable, that you would either be man enough to fish or cut bait. Who said we're having of troubles? Instead fucking around behind Becca's back. You are way off base, Izzy! I know, yeah, there's other stuff going on around here, but that doesn't make it okay. This is so beyond ridiculous, I don't even know how to respond to you. I don't need you to respond to me. I had to ask you what I had to ask. I mean, I had to say what I had to say. You could do whatever you want about it. About what? I'm not having an affair. Okay. I was comforting a friend. Good, I'm glad to hear that. And I don't know where this Rima person gets off making these offensive assumptions about well, me. Well, she'll be glad to hear it was all a misunderstanding. I mean, God, Izzy, and right after your spiel about us not having faith in you, what do you think of me? Oh, I'm sorry. She's my sister. I had to ask. Yeah, well, you've asked. Indeed, I have. Jesus. You know, I'll tell you one thing. If I ever see this Rima person again, I'm going to tell her what I think of her talking shit about me. <laughs> you should. She'll get a kick out of that. I'm going to get some juice. For the record, I hope I did sniff her on the tip. Oh, yeah, well, for the record, you did. <laughs> yes, I know, Becca, but luckily she had read about it in the paper. Of course she did. Hey, they're back. And if I didn't tell her, she realized once I explained to her, she realized who you were. You should have gotten her number. We could have had her over for cocktails. I was just trying to help. Well, I don't need you chasing after me, cleaning up my messes. What happened? We're apologizing for me. <laughs> That's not what I was doing. Hey, did you get my message about the olive something loaf? Something happened? No, I shut my phone. I had to Why? do something you kept back calling up. Me. Uh, I, I want an olive loaf. They would have called the cops. Cops? Where? No, she would not have called the cops. You don't know that. Wait, hold on. Somebody was gonna call the cops. What oh, happened? All right, all right. Oh, there was, we had a little scene. That's all. Just let me do this. <laughs> so how did we do here? Oh, looks a little light, huh? What kind of scene? What scene did you have? At the supermarket. Wait, you and mom? Something. What? What happened? Nothing. It's. It's so stupid. This is why I hate doing the shopping, Howie. Everything in there is like, oh look, Fruit Loops. Danny loved Fruit Loops. Hey, string cheese. Danny hated string cheese. Everything. You've got to do some of the food shopping. I'm sick of saying it. Becca got a little upset. About what? There was a boy there. He reminded you of Danny? No. Maybe a little bit. No, not really. He had red hair. What happened was we were in the same aisle as this kid, and he really wanted these roll-ups, fruit roll-ups. But his mother was being a real hard ass about it, saying she wasn't going to buy them for him. And it wasn't because she couldn't afford it, because you knew she had money. <laughs> so the kid starts getting whiny about it, which makes sense because he's five years old and he really wants these roll-ups. But she won't give in. In fact, she starts ignoring him completely, just turns her face away and pretends he's not there, goes about her shopping, like that's going to teach him a lesson or shut him up or something, but it only makes him more upset, so that pissed me off for some reason. What did? The way she was ignoring him instead of explaining why he couldn't have the roll-ups. So she walked over to her. What? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I just did. What did you say? I said, it's only three bucks. Why don't you just get him the fucking roll-ups? <laughs> 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 she looked miffed. And then she smiled a little. I don't know why. And then she explained that she didn't want her son eating candy. And I said that fruit roll-ups aren't candy. In fact, they're relatively healthy. They're made with real fruit. And why not give him a treat? And then she told me to mind my own business, and she tried to get her cart around me, but ran over my foot by accident, so I smacked her. What? <laughs> I smacked her. She did. She smacked her. I couldn't believe it. Real hard, too. Becca. I know. It was terrible. And the little boy started crying. It was awful. You hit that woman? <laughs> I'm just saying, glass houses, okay? She was <laughs> She was ignoring him, and it was pretty bitchy. I just wanted to shake her. Look at him. Don't pretend he isn't there. But I didn't say that. I just stood there, kind of startled. And she looked kind of startled. And then Mom comes over and tells me to go out to the car, which I did not need her to do. I just explained everything to her. That's all I did. She was mad at first, and I explained it, and she understood. No, she didn't. After I talked with her, I'm saying. Still, Mom, she didn't understand. You probably just made it seem like I was some crazy person, some oh, unstable. Oh, Yeah, did slap her. She's lucky that's all I did. <laughs> not that it helped. Not that she suddenly realized. I mean, it's a fruit roll-up. Am I wrong? No. I would have smacked her, too. <laughs> I was doing really 
well, too, wasn't I, Howie? I had a bunch of good days in a row. Well, Becca, you can come shopping with me anytime you want. <laughs> I'm going to get my kid whatever he wants. Fruit roll-ups, candy, soda. That wasn't my point, is it? <laughs> no, I know. You're saying to be with him. I mean, she wasn't paying attention. She was ignoring him. I totally get what you're saying. I completely understand. And, hey, if you ever see me doing what that lady did, smack me too, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe you taught that lady something, you know? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, hey, Ma, did they have any Bosco? Right here. Yes. Oh, let's crack that bad boy open. <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh, that's right. Have I shocked you? No. Not shocked. No. Well, you look shocked. Do I? Or something. <laughs> Fight him down, would you, Howie? was out there, I thought it would be a good idea if I just po poked my head in, but... Yeah, well, now's not a really good time for us. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we've got family visit. Oh, right, I didn't want to bother you guys or anything. I just wanted to stop by and just say hello, but another time <coughs> yeah, better? Yeah, it's just that we have relatives here. Right, you said. Hello. 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 Another time, then. Yeah, we're around, so whenever... Becca. You're... What? I could come by any afternoon, really, if there's a yeah, day. Yeah, well, you see, the problem is we're trying to sell the house, which takes up big blocks of our time. Well, it wouldn't take long, really. I'd... Still. I'd really like to arrange something with you. And I just said that now's not really a good time for us. I know, but I wasn't talking about right now. Great. Then why don't you take off then? And if we can arrange something in the future, we'll do that. Okay. Um, I wrote my number down, so if you guys free up at all... Can I just say something hey, to you? Hey, Howie, don't. You don't know, put the house sign. It's not a sign that says we're holding walking tours in here. I know that. Okay, you just don't pop your head in because the door is open. We're conducting business. That's why I waited until that other couple left. It looked like things were finished here. Yeah, well, they're not. I apologize, then. We live here, okay? This is our home. All right, Howie. You don't just walk in, especially given the circumstances. <laughs> you should show a little respect. I didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Sorry. Hiding out there behind a tree or something? No wonder Taz is barking. Maybe he's barking because he's hungry. Have you fed him yet today? No, I got no. caught up of with him. No, of course not. You wanted that dog so badly, but you can never remember to feed him. I'll do it. It's nice to know things are getting back to normal around here. That was the last thing she needed, that kid showing up here. She seemed fine with it. You were the one that seemed to get upset. Yeah, well, I'm not the one slapping people. <laughs> well, you came pretty close to it just then. <laughs> Look, I'm available next week if you want to do this again. Open house thing. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <clears throat> In the meantime, though, you should really do something about Danny's room. Um, Augie does renovation stuff on the side. I can talk to him and see I, if you I want him to come. I don't, I don't know. Okay, but, I mean, he does good work. He just did Mom's drywall, so I, I can see if you we, want. I think we got it covered. Okay. Still, um, <clears throat> you should really try and fix things up around here. With the room, I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Toss. Toss. All right. And 
And uh, this? Yeah. The Runaway Bunny. Remember this? Oh, that was your book. I know. Monkey? Um, I keep my guess. Howie doesn't mind this. It was his idea. After that open house. Seems his grief goes out the window when it comes to maximizing profits. I'm sorry. I don't know why I just said that. Just being mean. Besides, it's not like we're getting rid of everything. <gasps> oh. Don't do that. Quick and clean. Like a Band-Aid. Otherwise, we'll never get through it. So, did Izzy tell you I'm taking a continuing ed class? We're reading Bleak House. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? He handed out the syllabus and I just laughed. <laughs> Bleak House. Of course, no one knew why I was laughing, which was great. It's in Bronxville, so no one knows me. I'm normal there. I don't get the face every time someone looks at me. What face? Oh, you know. Oh, hi. Oh, how are you? Hanging in there. <laughs> I hate it. You know what I really like? These ladies, they don't even talk about their kids or their husbands or any of it. It's like they're just so happy to be away from all that. It's probably the last thing they want to talk about. Because I'm sure most of them are bored housewives, right? I don't know. I don't know these women. Well, that's who takes Westchester continuing ed classes, isn't it? I guess. They're just so happy to be talking about literature instead of what's for dinner. Who would want to talk about their families? I know I don't. Anyway, I like it. I like that I'm just a lady taking a class. Next week we start Madame Bovary. That ought to get the old girls going, huh? Oh. Oh. I don't know that book. No, I know. Oh, Doc. Oh. What the hell? <laughs> How do you turn that thing off? Oh. That's <laughs> annoying. Yeah. I know. Try listening to it for hours on end. <laughs> Izzy gave him this. Oh. <laughs> Only people without children give these kinds of gifts. <laughs> <laughs> and people who want to punish parents. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Debbie's kids might like this. I should save it for her. That would show her. You still haven't heard from her? Nope. Howie plays squash with Rick, but... And I hear the kids are good. Do you remember Emily? Oh, of course. She's getting big now. I thought you haven't seen them. No, but I passed by Danny's daycare last week and the kids were outside in the yard. What? I was just walking by. That's how I get to the post office. Yeah. Well, that's too bad about Jimmy, but things can happen and change. Friends disappear. I remember when your brother died. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, what about this? No, it's busted. Well, you know that thing about Debbie? Yeah. It would be just as bad the other way sometimes. Do you remember Maureen Bailey? Sure. Oh, well, I, couldn't get rid of her. I couldn't get rid of her when your brother passed away. I remember that. Always checking in on me, always at the house, eating up all the cinnamon buns that Uncle Jimmy brought me. <laughs> I guess it was all right, of course, but uh, it just didn't feel like it was about me. It felt like she had nothing better to do, like consoling me. It was her hobby, something to fill up her day. So finally, in the middle of coffee one afternoon, I said, Maureen, why are you here all the time? What did she say? <laughs> she said, I want to be there for you, Nat. I want to share in your grief. So I said, well, it's not working. I seem to have it all to myself still. You plant your ass, that fat ass, in that chair of yours every friggin' day. And you I, did not say oh, that. Oh, I did. <laughs> and you suck up all my coffee. And I don't see you leaving here with any of this grief that you're allegedly sharing with me. And in fact, the only thing you do take out of here are my cinnamon buns. <laughs> <laughs> so I never saw her again, obviously. But it's too bad, actually, because she was the only one who was willing to talk about art. Oh. You can say his name. Oh, can I? <sighs> I don't know what to say. I, I don't want to be scolded. I don't know your rules. You can Becca. talk about Arthur. I just don't like the comparisons. Okay. I mean, he was my brother, so obviously it was, it was a very hard time for all of us. I know. But it was a long time ago, and it was very different for me. Oh, of course it was. Okay, then. Say, what 
is this? Oh, that's uh, that's that story that boy wrote. He sent it to us. What is it? Some kind of Alice in Wonderland thing, or what? No, it's more science fiction. It's dedicated to Danny. I know. He asked us if he could do that. Why? Is it about Danny? No, not at all. It's about a scientist. Oh. Or the son of a scientist. Mm -hmm. His father discovers this warren of. It's like a network of holes that lead to other galaxies or parallel universes. And then he dies somehow, so his son goes into these holes to look for him. Well, not him because he's dead, but another version of him or something like that. Doesn't sound very good. It's okay. He's young. Keep it? Yeah. I think I'm going to see him, actually. Who? Jason Willett. Why? I don't know. I just want to. Which is how we think. I was not into it. Well, I think it was weird. It was weird the way he walked in like that, creepy. You don't think that was creepy? No. Well, I think it was creepy. You should ask what Howie thinks. I don't have to ask Howie what he thinks. Quite frankly, I don't care what Howie thinks. I'm just saying. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Fine. Listen, I thought we could put the uh, brown bedspread in here. Okay. And then also maybe hang the Ansel Adam prints down in the basement. <coughs> Sounds like a plan. Good. Making progress, I see. Yep. Good. Looks good. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to uh, take Tess for a walk. Do you need anything while I'm out? No, I don't think so. Hey, thanks for helping out, man. Sure. I hate that kind of spray. I'll put the blue one in here. It's neutral enough. Hey, you know what I was thinking about this morning? Remember that gourmet basket you and Howie gave me last year for Mother's Day? Yeah. The ones with the biscotti and all the fancy biscuits? Mm-hmm. And put all the chocolates out when you guys came over for dinner. And little Danny ate up the entire bowl of chocolates when nobody was looking. Oh, so Howie said, well, where did all the chocolates go? And I said, Danny ate them. Leave them alone. Kids like candy. <laughs> then Howie said, but those with chocolate covered espresso beans. <laughs> oh, remember that? <laughs> God. I sure do. And the kid was like, he ate the entire bowl, and he was like really, really wired. <laughs> and he was running around, <laughs> running in circles, and climbing up <laughs> the walls, and putting things on his head. And he, <laughs> and he didn't go to sleep until like 3 a.m. Remember that? <laughs> Only too well. <laughs> I didn't know what the damn things were. I just thought they were candy. <laughs> Give me all these fancy baskets with all this crazy stuff in them. <laughs> Espresso beans. <laughs> I tell that story to everyone. They get such a kick out of it. <laughs> oh, <boy. sighs> Mom, does it go away? What? This feeling. Does it ever go away? No. I don't think it does. Not for me it hasn't, and that's going on 11 years. But things change. Yeah. I don't know, the weight of it, I guess. At some point it becomes bearable. It turns into something you can crawl out from under and carry it around like a brick in your pocket. It goes away for a while, every once in a while. You reach in. Pull it out and say, ah, that's right. There he is. That. Which can be awful. But not all the time. Sometimes it's kind of... It's not that you like it exactly. It's what you have instead of your son. And you don't want you don't want to let go of it either. So you carry it around. And it doesn't go away. Which is... What? Which is fine. Actually. Make some lemon squares. Thank you. Would you like a glass of milk or something? I don't have any soda unless you like seltzer. I'm fine, thank you. 
Well, you need something to wash it down. You don't drink coffee, do you? Well, sometimes, but... Do you want some coffee? No, I'm okay, really. Thank you. Okay. Well, let me know if you change your mind. This is good. Thank you. Yeah, it's still warm. So you're moving? We're thinking about it. We can find a buyer. Where are you moving to? We're still looking. Far away? No, probably not. My husband works in the city, so we can't go that far. What, uh, what does he do? He works at Prime Brokerage, risk management. <coughs> oh. He takes the train. Right. But we don't want to go too far. This is, this is a nice house. I hope you find one as nice as this one. Yeah. We'll probably go smaller. This is too big. I'm sorry how we couldn't be here. Oh, that's okay. He's, uh... Not ready? I was going to say working. But yeah, that too. He seemed mad the other day. No, no, no. He, he, he was just surprised that you dropped by. Okay. I think you scared him a little bit. He didn't seem scared. Well, maybe that's not the right word, but how he's not mad at you. What happened was an accident. How he knows that. You know that too, right? goes right through me. I swear, we'd better move someplace without squirrels. You should have his vocal cords snipped. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what some people do if their dogs won't stop barking. I never heard of that. Yeah, I know, because some dogs just, like, won't shut up, so that's what they have to do. Otherwise, the alternative is either give them away or put them to sleep, I guess. You should look it up online. I bet there's tons of information if you're interested. No, Howie would never allow it. He loves that dog too much. Do you have any pets? No. Well, that's lucky. Yeah. Unless you want a pet. Do you want a pet? Because I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, we uh, read this book. Bleak House? Yeah, in English class. Did you like it? No, it, it was too long. I know, I barely made it through. I did like David Copperfield, though. Also very long. Yeah, but you know, it didn't seem as long. No, you're right. So, um, I don't see any photos anywhere. Of Danny? Yeah. Well, we put most of them away because of the open house. Oh, okay. Would you like to see some pictures? Because oh. I can show you. No, thank you. Okay. You know, I did like the one in the article. Him at the beach? Anaport Bay. Yeah, he used to have a shirt just like that one. <laughs> yeah, the one the lady's wearing in the picture. Yeah. I might have been going too fast. Sure, I'm not sure, but I might have been. It's a 30 zone, and I, I don't know. I might have been going 33, 32. I'm not sure, but I might have been. You know, I would usually look down to check, and if I was going too fast, I would slow down, obviously. But I don't remember checking on your block. That's, that's something that I wanted to tell you. The dog came out really quick. I swerved to avoid him not knowing, obviously, and I'm sorry. Something that I thought I should let you know. I might have been going over the limit, but I can't be positive either way. I'm gonna get you some milk. You don't have to drink it if you don't want. Okay. So, you're a senior? Yeah. Where are you headed in the fall? Connecticut College. They have a good writing program over there. Well, that's nice for you. And not too far from home. Your parents must be happy about that. Yeah, it's just my mom, but yeah, she's happy, I guess. She's already started picking out sheet sets for the dorm room. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, she keeps on saying she's going to apply to the graduate program over there so she can uh, keep an eye on me. <laughs> she's just joking, though. Right. <laughs> she's not really looking forward to it, because I'm the only one at home right now. But, you know, I told her that I would stop by on the weekends when I could. Well, that's nice. Here you go. Thank you. And you graduate when? Thursday. Uh, Matt Lauer speaking. His niece is in my class. Oh, that's great. I like Matt Lauer. Yeah, so does my mom. So you must have a prom coming up. Oh, well, it was last Saturday, actually. You went? Yeah. Do you have a girlfriend? Oh, no. I mean, I did, but we broke up a while ago. So I went with this girl, Carly, who's just a friend. And then this other girl, Tina, went with this guy, Jake, whose dad owned this, owns this really old-fashioned Rolls Royce that he takes to the car shows and stuff. So we all went in that together. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it was a tight squeeze, though. But, I mean, we had champagne in the back, not to get drunk or anything, just to celebrate. <laughs> Carly's really skinny, so <laughs> she got a little bit tipsy, even though she had, like, one glass of champagne. Mm -hmm. And she kept on telling the driver to, like, put the roof down so she could stand up in the back and not all crazy and stuff. The car's not even a convertible. So we couldn't be fun of her all night for that one. That part was pretty funny. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That was stupid of me. I asked. <coughs> Still, I... Do you want me to go? No. I'm fine. So you had a good time then, at the prom? Yeah, it was okay. Well, it sounds like it was very nice. Oh, um, I really like that story that you sent us. I'm sorry we never thanked you for it. Oh, no, that's okay. We appreciate it. <coughs> So the scientist that that boy is looking for, is that your father? No. No, I mean, is it based on him? No, oh, my dad was an English teacher. Oh, okay. I was just wondering about that. He is dead, though, right? Well, it is just a story. No, I, I know. I'm sorry. It's none of my business. I was just reading into it. reminded me of Orpheus and Eurydice. Do you know that Greek myth? No, not really. Eurydice dies, and Orpheus misses her so much that he travels to Hades to retrieve her. But in the end, it doesn't work out. Yeah, I should read it. Yeah, it's very similar. Except instead of Hades, you have the rabbit holes, the parallel universes. I like that part. That was interesting. <coughs> Thank you. Is that something you believe in? Parallel universes? Yeah. Well, I mean, if space is infinite, then, which is what most scientists believe, then yeah, there have to be parallel universes. There have to be? Yeah, because infinite space means... It means that things just go on and on forever. So there's an infinite amount of possibilities. Okay. So, even the most unlikely situations have to take place somewhere. Including alternate universes with us leading different lives, or the same lives with a couple of different things changed up. And you think that's plausible? Not just plausible, probable. Except the most basic laws of science. So somewhere out there, there's a version of me, what, making pancakes? <coughs> or at a water park? Yeah, wherever, both. If you, if you believe in science, then I mean, there are tons of views out there, and there are tons of me's. So this is just the sad version of us? Mm -hmm. Yes. And there are other versions where everything goes our way? Right. And these other versions exist. They're not hypothetical. They're real, actual people. Yeah, I mean, assuming you believe in science. Well, that's a nice thought. Somewhere out there, I'm having a good time. <laughs> okay. So, could, could you tell your husband for me that I might have been going over the limit? I know, I know he's still mad at me. He's not mad. No one's mad. Okay, but still. Could you tell me? For me? <laughs> I forgot how 
weird runaway bunny was. My mother's like a stalker. Come on, she's not a stalker. Well, of course you don't think so. <laughs> but look, she turns into the wind and shit, and then a mountain climber. I mean, the poor kid, he needs to get himself a restraining order. <laughs> oh, hey! I remember this! Yeah. <laughs> she said I could have this? Oh, yes. She especially wants you to have this. <laughs> okay, I typed it all out for you. I put lime zest in the filling, but you don't have to use that. You can use orange zest or a little grapefruit or lemon, obviously. Jesus, Becca, this is like three pages long. This looks hard. It's not, I promise. I put everything down. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't even know if the oven works. Augie's never even used it. He keeps dishes in there. <laughs> if you get stuck, you can call me. Okay, I mean, me baking, huh? <laughs> Augie's going to be so surprised. Well, anybody in the right mind would be. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, hello there. Hey, Howie. Hi. You're home. Yeah. I thought you had crew. Yeah, I decided to skip it. Right? What, what time is it? Um, I don't know. Time to go? <laughs> Plus, um, I need to sign up for Lamaze classes. Augie really wants me to learn how to shove a baby out of my body. <sighs> Thanks for the stuff, guys. You're welcome. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Thank you, Howie. I'll see you later. Hey, what's the Belm's rush? Bingo is only at St. Catherine's, you know? Can't we discuss it in the car, Mother, please? Thank you. I didn't even get a lemon square. <laughs> Alan brought in his zucchini bread again today. He made me take what was left because he wants you to try it. Oh, that was nice of him. You'll have to thank him for me. We had pie art. It's in here if you're hungry. No, Alan kept pushing that bread on me all day. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, how'd it go with the kid? Fine. It was totally fine. Well, what do you want? Just to, I don't know, introduce himself, talk a little bit, I guess. Well, did you let him off the hook? What do you mean? Well, he seemed pretty intent on wanting to sit down with us. I assumed he wanted to be absolved or something. Is that what he wanted? No, not in so many words, no. No. Well, did you tell him we didn't blame him? We don't blame him. No, I know, but did you let him know that? I guess so. Good. So I don't have to meet him then, do I? No, not if you don't want to. Okay. So why aren't you a group? Yeah, I just decided to skip it. I wasn't up to it. How come? I don't think I'm going to go back. I think I might be done with the group. Why? What happened? Yeah, nothing. It's just that it's not as helpful to me anymore. I think I want to try it on my own for a while. I mean, not on my own, obviously, but without the group. Does that sound okay? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're not getting anything out of it, then why go? Exactly. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just a little tired and full of zucchini bread. Okay, I'm going to try it. It's good? Yeah, it's great. So, Rick and Debbie invited us to a cookout this weekend. Really? Sunday, they said. Are you free? Yeah. You talk to Rick? No, Debbie. You talked to Debbie? I called her. Wow. She must have been surprised. She was. Well, what'd she say? Well, you know, she cried mostly. And then she apologized about 60 times, and then she cried some more. <laughs> that sounds great. It was okay. She said she'd been meaning to call me, but she felt really freaked out about everything, so she just let the time go by, and before she knew it, six months had gone by, and she felt like such an asshole. She was sure that I hated her, so she figured it would be easier just to not call me. And that was good enough for you? I don't know. We'll see how Sunday goes. Kids are going to be there. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> That'll be hard. Yeah. It'll be good to see them, though. We have to get something for Emily. We missed her birthday. She turned four last week. Right. Okay. Danny's is coming up. I know. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. This is 
tastes good. I'll tell Alan you like it. It's so quiet. That's because I slipped Taz and Ambien. <laughs> You're funny. You think I'm joking? <laughs> you think we should reconsider the house? Nobody bids. We might have to. There are worse things, I guess. Yeah. It's a nice house. Yeah, I know. So what are we going to do? About what? I don't know. Pick something. Well, we could go to Village Toys tomorrow and pick up Candyland for Emily. It's probably something she'd like. Okay. Candyland. That's a start. Then what? <clears throat> Then we'll wrap it. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, we'll go to the cookout and give her the gift and <coughs> speak to Rick and Debbie. And uh, to make them feel comfortable, we'll ask the kids a bunch of questions about you know, what they've been up to, and we'll pretend like we're interested. And then we'll wait for Rick or Debbie to bring up De Danny while the kids are playing in the rec room. And maybe that'll go on for a while. And after that, we'll come home. And then what? I don't know. Something, though. We'll figure it out. Will we? I think so. I think we will. <laughs>